Welcome to my demonstration of creating a painting with calligraphy and oil painting. I'm a calligrapher and most calligraphers tend to do calligraphy with ink on paper, but I'm also a painter and I combine calligraphy and oil painting. So I'm putting on some latex gloves. Sometimes people tend to be allergic to latex and there are latex gloves that are hypoallergenic. Some people tend to get irritated with the latex or any kind of glove because it, it prevents the the skin from breathing and some of them have like a powder on the inside. So I just like to use this just to keep my hands clean because some of the pigments from the inks from calligraphy ink and the pigments from paint, they tend to stain the fingers, especially the cuticles, even though you wash your hands really good. So I have, I'm going to show you a blank canvas because of the size. It's 30 inches by 40 inches. It's what they call a gallery wrap canvas. And it's about two inches wide, if you could see that there. And because it's so large, it has two crossbars in the back. And this one is a Frederick canvas. They're a good quality canvas. And right now I have a painting that is also a 30 by 40 inch that I finished this last December of 2020. And it has the verse Isaiah 9. This is calligraphy done with a paintbrush. This is all oil paint. And I did Isaiah 9 from the Old Testament, and it has verses 2, 6, and 7. I felt like I needed to do something really encouraging for the month of December. And I put the 2020 Christmas star up there. You could see that. There's something where they call a sweet spot when you want to try to find the sweet spot with art. So for instance, I have my painting that's 30 by 40. And so with that star that you could see there, what I did is I measured. So for instance, I just measured 10 inches in and then, so a third of 40 down and that's where I put the star. And, and I measured, and I used, what I do is I, I use these types of paint brushes that have a square to it. And they're, and I like to use the sable brushes. And then when I, when I do my painting, I like to do, I like to work in layers. And the paints that I like to use are a walnut base paint because for me personally, I tend to have a allergy, I believe, to oil paint that has the linseed in it. And you also working with the turpentines and turpenoids, I tend to get headaches and I have a really hard time breathing. It's, it's like it takes my breath away. So what I found is I work with the Daniel Smith paints and they tend not to give me the allergies that I would normally get with oil paint. And then I also work with M. Graham Company and it's a company that has their manufacturing plant in Oregon. And their base to all their pigments is made with walnut oil. And then I also use something where it's called a it's called a walnut alkyd medium, an oil medium, and you mix the the walnut oil the way you would mix water with watercolor or water with acrylic, but you mix this. Now this is very gross looking. It's been very used, but it's made by the M. Graham Company. 
And what I like to do when I do my calligraphy, I like to use the interference paint. So this one is by Daniel Smith. So on this painting that I'm working on here, I'm going to be using interference copper. And the, the paint is a little bit transparent. So I'll show you this one here that I did in December. And it's dry now. But if you look at the paint, and if you look at the background here, this is the same paint that is here. But because of the background color, it looks like a different color. You could see that. And so this was a, a green interference paint because I wanted to pick up the green in here. And I wanted to carry in a little bit of the color in the interference paint in the painting here. So I put a little bit of the interference paint here. And then I put a little bit of the purple interference paint in here. And then with the star, I put just a touch of the interference paint as well. So one of the things about doing calligraphy with a paintbrush and not a steel pen, a lot of it is control of how you hold your hand. So when I do my calligraphy, I like to use my pinky as a guide. And I'll show you, for example, when I'm doing the calligraphy here, this is dry, but so I use this as a guide. And so I have control and I just go like this. So when you're doing calligraphy, you want to have that thin here and thick here and thick here and you always have to hold your pen or your paintbrush at this angle so when you're going this direction it's thin but then when you go this direction it's thick or if you go horizontally so it's thin here and thick and thin and that's because you're holding it at the same angle all the time so another thing that I did here is I used a chalk pencil to line out my lines. And so you can see a little bit here and, and I measure everything out. And then what I do is then I can go over and I can just, when the painting is all dry, then I just take a rag with a little water and then I just rub it and then it goes away. Now, this I used watercolor pencil on oil. I recommend not using the watercolor pencil because it's hard to get rid of in, when, it, when you write into the oil. And I recommend that if you're gonna be lining out, you use a chalk pencil and I'll show you that in just a second. So what I did here just to prep, I measured everything out. So here you have 30 inches. So my middle is 15. And I want to write Psalms 23 from the Hebrew Bible or the Old Testament. So what I've done is I've marked out 23 areas where I'm going to be writing like 23 lines. And I, when I counted the verses in the Bible, it seemed to be 23 lines, which, which I thought was kind of interesting with Psalms 23. So what I do here is you have your upper, your middle, and then this is where like the tail of all your words would be like say a Y or a G. So I just wrote this by hand in the chalk pencil. So here you're gonna take the capital letter and I'm filling this part and this part but then the lowercase letter, like the O for instance, is gonna fit in this part right here. And then the G part right here. And when I do this, it goes right in here into this area. So notice how everything, I don't wanna start a new sentence in this area. 
I only want to start a new sentence in this area. So I marked it off so that I won't make a mistake and write in the wrong area. And that's what I did here. I marked it off. And then I measured, so I measured this, and this tends to be about 18 to 19 inches is where it's varying. And so what I did here, I just took my 15 inch point, the middle, and then I measured over to nine inches and 10 inches. So from the edge, it's five inches to here, and it's six inches to the edge. So there's a lot of things I got to do when I'm doing artwork and calligraphy, because when you're doing artwork and calligraphy, you're using the creative part of the brain and the logical part of the brain. So you have to do a lot of things so that you don't make common mistakes of measuring and misspelling, which is really, really common when you're doing calligraphy and art at the, at the same time. And always take a step back and look at your work. So I wanted to show you another example of some calligraphy I did. It's up here. And this one is the John Newton Amazing Grace lyrics. And I did the same thing. And notice how I want the lettering to show up. So this one, I didn't use the interference paint right here. What I used was just regular paint. So I wanted to use contrasting colors. So I used the light blue. And then this is like a rust tone, like a reddish rust tone. So they're complementaries. So they show up. But then notice how I, um, I use the, the rust color against the blue sky. And then as you're going down, I use the blue against the rust colored background. So it shows up. And so I like over his skin tone, I lightened the blue. And here over the white of his shirt, I darkened the blue. So there's all kinds of things that you can do with lettering. And it does, it's not about perfection. It's about doing things and having it in your home. And perfection comes with practice. And it's important to have positive reminders in your home. And it's also really good for your mental health, especially now with the stress that we've had for 2020 and now with 2021. It's just important to take a breather and to take things that are very encouraging to you, like maybe lyrics to songs, I've done that, scriptures, um, quotes like Confucius quotes and um, you know, just anything that's really encouraging and just put it on your house and it helps to change the atmosphere in your family. It helps change the atmosphere in your home, your workplace. And it's a reminder that there's always hope. So that's the importance of calligraphy and doing artwork and combining it together and using the symbols it with artwork and combining it with calligraphy so that it's illustrating and it's telling a story instead of just only the calligraphy or only the painting. It's important for me to merge the two. So I wanted to show you also, there's some great, oh, I wanted to show you. So this is, an example of watercolor pencils and it is Ruck, it's called Ruck's Museum and this is one of the ones I love. I use this more for paper and if I'm gonna be doing any water base painting and calligraphy com combo, any kind of watercolor pencil. So I'll show you what they look like. So we just, they look like a colored pencil, but when you put water on it, it activates it and it turns into watercolor paint. So the one that I use on the oil painting is Stabilo, and that's this company. And it's a company where the products are made in Germany and the Czech Republic. 
and I'll show you some of the pencils. It's like this is what they look like, the chalk pencil. And that's what I did here. I just lined it. And then I have T-squares. So this is a metal T-square, and it's made by Fairgate. It's made in the U.S. I bought this in the 70s when I was in college. This one is a 48-inch, and it has the measurements on both sides, so it's perfect. And then I line, like I use this, and I line this up on my art table or on my canvases. So this is the back. You can see that edge there. So this one I put here to measure this direction. And then I use this one, which is a also the same company. Measurements on both sides. And this one is a 24 inch. So you see the back there. And then I'll use this one here a lot of times to measure. And that's how I get accuracy when I'm doing my, my lettering. I wanna show you some books that, like here's a catalog, it's John Neal Bookseller. There's another company called Paper, Ink and Arts. I don't have their catalog, but you can find them online. And you can also order from John Neal online. And if you have any trouble finding any kind of calligraphy supplies and many of the art supplies, you can also order from John Neal or Paper, Ink and Arts. And so they're more of the specialty, specialty company for calligraphy. And then you can also order from Cheap Joe's. I've been able to order from them. I don't have the catalog. You can also order from Daniel Smith. It's in Seattle. And they're the ones who have the interference paint. So this is the tube of the interference paint. And then I use many, many calligraphy textbooks to get ideas. And this is a good one to learn calligraphy. But this is more of a ink, has more lessons in ink calligraphy. And then it has all the different styles of calligraphy. And then it has examples of how calligraphers, they use that style. And then it lists the name of the calligrapher. So you can order those. And a lot of times I also, you know, as I'm layering and lining everything out and I have a good idea in my head and I think it's going to work. So I'll use, I'll, I'll do a thumbnail and I'll just, you know, come up with an idea and I just do like a, you know, I'll say something like 40 inch, 30 inch, you know, and I want to have my mountains here, have my calligraphy here. So I have that idea. And then this is a grid. And I, this is a calligraphy grid. I got this from John Neal Bookseller. So I'll do the actual calligraphy on here and just play around with the idea. So I've already played around with these ideas. And then sometimes I want to be extra sure. And, you know, I have calligraphy markers the because I don't want to go through all the trouble of doing the dip calligraphy, but I'll have the calligraphy pens that have cartridge in it. Or I'll have calligraphy markers, like these are Zig calligraphy markers. And I just want to, you know, be quick and uncompl you know, uncomplicated. So sometimes I'll say, well, do I want that size? And I'll have tissue and I'll put tissue on there and just tape it on there because I have these ideas. So that's something to think about. That tissue paper that I really like that doesn't bleed 
it's made by the B Paper Company. And it's just a pad of tissue paper. And I am always, you know, buying books, trying to get ideas and learn about calligraphy. So if you want to teach children, I know many of you are homeschooling right now. This is a book that I picked up when my kids were young and it's, and then I taught art to children, but it's called What the Painter Sees and it's published by Scholastic. So if you could find this, this is an excellent book. It talks about painting. It talks about, you know, it talks about painted books. So many of the illuminated manuscripts, it talks about that. This was before the invention of the printing press. So all those calligraphers were illuminators and they were painters. So they painted the letters, they painted all the illustrations on there to tell the story. So like these are some examples just to show you. And it's great to teach children all about you know, the making of books before the printing press, how they were all handmade. And it just has a lot of different, you know, just perspective and things like that. So another thing that's excellent to have is color wheels. And this one I've had it's a color compass by M. Grambacher. So it talks about the dimensions of color, like hue, intensity, value. And this is the book. And then it shows you how to make skin tones. So if you want to use your blue and your orange, your green and your red. And then here's like a, but they're like this one is an ultramarine blue and a cadmium yellow. And it just helps you to make flesh tones. One of the great things about it is learning about primaries and how to mix the primaries and get your secondaries your complementaries, your tertiary colors. It talks about how to tone down colors. So here's a color wheel. And if you could find one of these and you can find everything about your complementaries and then your hues and adding you know, like a triadic color, a split color, a direct color, a pure color, tints, low intensities, lots of information about painting. And it just takes patience and practice. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you an example of doing your your lines. So I've already measured it out. And I'm going to I'll use the I'll use the small one. So
So I'm going to show you this close up. So I did my, so this is where I would put my, my calligraphy right in this area, right all in here. And then if I have a Y, a G, that type of thing, I put it down in here. Always going at an angle using my pinky, going at an angle like this. And using my pinky. And so I used a lighter color here. I could see it here. I may want to go over that with one of the darker colors like this so I could see like right in here. You might want to do that, leave that light, but leave this dark in here so you could see. But I'll show you how, you know, pretty much comes off. And then I can even just, you know, cover that over. What I'm going to be doing is I want to put, once I do my lettering here, I want to take a mist and I want to go over just like a fog or a mist that collects in between mountains and in the valley. So a lot of this will get blended and will disappear and you won't see those lines. So if you want to continue to learn more, um, Let's see if I have some, there's other books that you could look into, like, oh, and I, and I do have lots of charts like this that are important to just maybe have on a wall just to remind yourself about colors. And then on the back, it has... It explains about complementary and tertiary colors. This is made by Jack Rickison and Company. It also talks about grayscale. So you have grayscale depending on how much pigment you have, how much intensity of color. So with watercolor, acrylic, and even with oil, if I want to make it more transparent, like what I said, I'm going to make this real transparent with a cloud, like a, like a mist. So I'm going to be adding a little bit more of my alkalide medium to give it that transparency. So thank you. And I think if you want to contact me and ask me any more questions, you can find me at my website at TeresaMarieArtAndDesign.com or you can also contact me through Etsy. It's Teresa Marie for the number four art on Etsy.com and my email is Teresa Marie for the number four art at gmail.com and my phone number is 360-480-9955 and I would love to have you join me. And so what I will be doing is, you know, I'd like to eventually just read things and just continue doing this. And it's like a ministry. It's like, it's good for mental health. <laughs> and, and it's good for your family to, and your friends and your co-workers and your neighbors just to put out a positive energy and a positive spirit and focus on creating beauty with beautiful lyrics and beautiful art. So thank you and I will talk with you soon.